Okay, so here, you know, we got uh, four resistors in parallel, and we're asked to uh, use current division uh, to determine the current in each branch, basically. And so we uh, note here then that uh, uh, the current division general formula says that uh, the current in some branch X is equal to uh, the total equivalent resistance of our branches uh, divided by the resistance of branch X and multiplied by the total current entering the branches. Okay, so if we want to uh, apply current division uh, to this circuit, we have to find the total resistance. And so uh, we can start off now by saying that we recognize there are three equal resistors uh, in this branch. So let's call that uh, our A and the equivalent resistance of the three 100 ohm resistors then, uh, 100 ohms divided by 3 and so that gives us 33.3 ohms now uh, you know if you want to redraw the circuit at this point you can do that uh, and so a little mistake there um, Okay, so if we did that, basically now we would show that uh, we got uh, two resistors uh, in parallel. And uh, let me try to fix that a bit. Okay. A bit messy. Uh, okay, so then uh, we have the 33.3 that represents the three 100s, and that is in parallel with 30 ohms. And so the totally equivalent resistance then of our four of those resistors, which we'll call REQ, can be found as the product over sum of RA and 30. And so the product 33. 0.3 repeating uh, multiplied by 30 over the sum 33.3 plus 30 or 63.3 and if we do that calculation we have found that the equivalent resistance if we round it to three significant digits 15.8 ohms which we'll use now in our current division uh, calculations and so remember that this current here uh, the two amps we'll consider it and we'll call this one i1 uh, and so if i could uh, fix that little bit there uh, okay so we'll call this one I1 uh, we'll call this one I2 and then we have I3 and this one down here I4. Now, if we have three equal resistors, of course, we have three equal currents, right, of course, and uh, we know then that as well uh, that those currents, uh, if there are two amps divides into four currents, when they recombine at this node here, uh, they will recombine into two amps. Okay, so let's um, calculate uh, I1, and we know that I1 will also be equal to I2, which will also be equal to 
are 4. And using our current division calculation, that will be equal to, uh, we do it in terms of all our 1, right? So we have our equivalent over our 1 times our t. And so our 1 then is equal to uh, 15 point eight ohms which was our value uh, for our equivalent divided by the 100 ohms for our one and multiply that by the two amps and so uh, if we do that calculation we get 0 0.31 six amps or 316 milliamps and so remember now that uh, uh, here this is routed to three significant digits and so again uh, that tells us that I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I4 and that all of those are 316 milliamps. And so now we could use Kirchhoff's current law to find the remaining current in the 30 uh, ohm resistor, um, but we're really asked to do it using current division, right? And so uh, now if we want to find I3 by the current division formula, we have our equivalent divided by R3 times IT uh, and so that gives us the 15.8 ohms that we calculated for our equivalent divided by 30 ohms for R3 and again multiplied by the 2 amps and if we do that calculation uh, we will come up with 1.053 amps and so here you notice that uh, I kept uh, three places after the decimal and so that gives me four significant digits uh, but the reality is is that uh, you know if I'm going to add those up uh, to verify Kirchhoff's current law then that me really means that if I'm adding it to the 316 milliamps I should keep three places after the decimal um, just to show I guess for accuracy or whatever so uh, here then uh, Kirchhoff's current law says I1 plus I2 plus I3 uh, plus I4 is equal to 0.316 point three one six uh, let's go with I three one point zero five three and then the point three one six for I four and uh, clean that up a little bit there and if we uh, add up all of these, uh, you will find that that gives us a total of 2.001 amps, and so very close to IT. Uh, let's say that that's approximately equal to 2 amps, uh, which is IT. And so, of course, small rounding error there. Uh, remember that if you keep three significant digits for all your calculations, uh, that means that, uh, you know, your rounding error be minimal, just like it is here, right? And so, uh, that verifies Kirchhoff's current, uh, 
law really well and again that tells us that we have no mistakes made uh, in our calculation.